Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Peyton Warner. I'm here with my friend, my beautiful, handsome, intelligent friend, Jalen Diaz. Talk of the town is back. We have had about a week to digest the NBA Finals. And the first things first, what we got to talk about is Golden State, four championships in eight years, and they beat Ooh. the Boston Celtics. And, Jay, the number one reason they beat those Boston Celtics, defense, defense, defense. Yes, sir. I can absolutely agree with that. I can absolutely agree with that. Boston's claim to fame this whole turnaround. They went 24-7 and to close out the year, all postseason. Their claim to fame was defense, number one ranked defense in the NBA. However, you could tell that the Warriors earned that second spot because with Draymond being out for a while, with Clay being out for a while, with Steph being out for a while, they didn't play at full strength until game one of the first round of the playoffs, and they still managed the second-ranked defense. So you can see why they were the second-ranked defense, even with all their pieces not playing together. Boston averaged, rounding up a little bit, 17 turnovers per game, Jay. 17 <laughs> turnovers per game. And you could think, you know, maybe they're just throwing it out of bounds and stuff like that, traveling, illegal screens. No, 10.3 of those 17 were steals. What we really need to focus on here is the fact that this is great team defense as a unit. Right now, I want to give my props to the guys that were giving incredible effort despite not being great defenders, and that being Bielitsa, Loon, and Steph, because they're not known as great defenders, especially on the ball on the perimeter, but no, they okay. worked their ass off. And, was... and that was... Trust me, we're going to get into more stuff later. But they were working on defense. So, Jay, I know who you want to talk about on defense. So, please, let's talk about Andrew Wiggins. Go ahead. That boy, Andrew Wiggins. Let's just say, I man got drafted when I was going into high school. Mm -hmm. And to see this man thrive, he literally played that game. What was it, game five? He played his best offense. And then he locked up the Celtics' best player. Yeah. He looked like Jason Tatum, and then Jason Tatum looked like 2015 Andrew Wiggins. It was <laughs> bad out there. It was literally <laughs> bad out there. And granted, you know, I I don't have you know I'm not a stats stats guru, but like from overall perspective of like him being able to play the type of defense that he played at from from one through five, like when, wherever it didn't matter who he was on, he played the best defense he could play possibly, and he got his hands in there, and he just it was unbelievable. And the fact that they 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 made them turn the ball over seventeen times. Yep. It's, it's, it's like you can't win the championship. That's not championship basketball. Nah. So I heard you say you're not a stats guru, but luckily, I got okay. some stats for you. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So if there was a if there was a headline on this, you know, like like yep. down there, if I had a headline, it would say Jason Tatum stranded on Wiggins <laughs> Island. That's what it would say, because this yeah. man Jason Tatum. Shot 37% from the field. Wiggins was on Tatum for the majority of the time. I know T Tatum was seeking out switches on Curry and Poole every once in a while, but most of the time, Wiggins was on Jason Tatum, and he's forcing him into bad shots. And funny enough, Tatum's three-point percentage was actually much better than his overall field goal percentage, which means he's getting the catch-and-shoot shots to go in because Wiggins ain't near him. Huge props to Wiggins, and of course, you can't talk defense without mentioning Draymond Green. He was holding players 10% lower than their field goal percentage this series. I don't know exactly what the number was. I forgot to write it down, but 10% lower than their season-slash-playoff average when Draymond was the primary defender. And also, of course, GP2 runs in the family with the, with the great defense that he plays. I know he is the smallest guy on the floor, but young glove, pickpockets, Everybody. Oh, Jalen Brown, he was taking his lunch money. He was taking Derek White's lunch money. He was taking Tatum's lunch money. Uh, the percentage that opponent shot on GP was a little bit better. Got to remember, this dude is six foot two. Jason Tatum is six foot nine. Tatum's shooting directly over him, but he's making cool. it tough. He's stealing the ball and he's playing great minutes. So shout out to GP2. I'm happy as a fan that we got him back. I'm happy for him like I know him personally. Like a dude that's been through a journey like that to be in the G yeah, League yeah. on five it's different teams, to get incredible. a guaranteed contract. And, it, and play meaningful minutes in the playoffs after an injury that should have sidelined him for the remainder of the postseason, I'm very happy for him. So shout out to GP2 for great defense, but the Warriors in general locking everybody down. They, just, they literally just outright hustled and like just over just outplayed him. Simple as that. Like you can't. In that last game, all you seen was 
a hopeless Celtics looking for a bailout. Mm -hmm. They were looking for somebody to bail them out. And and, and honestly, Jalen Brown, shit, he was basically bailing them out, but nobody yeah, else. Yeah. Dude, he, and the problem was, is like, they would get into the paint, and then they'd be like, like, and then they'll just throw it away. Yeah. And then it's a turnover. And the thing is, the Warriors' best basketball is what? When they turn that ball over and they get yeah, on the break. Running. Yep. Because once they get the win, you don't know who's gonna be. You don't know who's behind you, who's trailing, and who's in front of you. Especially if you just turned the ball over. Exactly. So there's just so much into it, though. It, it's, it's just crazy how like they just literally outright bullied the the last two three games. It I, was unbelievable. I completely agree with what you're saying about transition. And the thing with this Warriors team that previous Warriors teams didn't have is the you have the shooters. Obviously, everyone knows you got Pool, Clay, and shooters, Curry can shoot. However. Players. What people didn't realize about transition that I'm, I'm adding on is that they have a vertical threat now. So, so of course, they have the three-point threats, but you're going to run out on Steph. Okay, here's an easy dunk for Wiggins. And you could argue that a dunk might be more momentum than, than a Curry three-pointer. So to have 10-plus steals per game, that's 10 runouts. Mm -hmm. You got, you got open looks. You got dunks. You got great opportunities. And then that's eventually what would cost – cost Boston the series. Another thing I really want to I really want to give a little bit of props to is something that doesn't get recognized as defense, but in my mind it goes hand in hand and that's rebounding. This is where I want to give even more credit to the guys that are already getting all the credit, Steph and Wiggins because they stepped up on the glass when there's really only one center for Golden State. I mean, Bielitsa yeah. is not really a center. Yeah. And even then, he only played four yeah. of the six games. Only even at that too because I mean, my man was playing some of the best basketball of his career, but like, yeah, set, like compared to the centers, like the the superstar centers or like you know the you know the above average centers in today's league, they're they're monsters. They're huge. Looney's Looney get you know he put a body on you, but yeah. he's not you know he's not a Robert Williams. Where he's yeah. just gonna just pop up like a spring and grab yeah. the ball and come down with it. So so just just to mention, uh, Andrew Wiggins led the Warriors in rebounds with eight point eight rebounds per game, much higher than his season average. And Steph Curry bringing in six rebounds per game as well as the smallest dude on the floor. So it's not exactly defense, but it does go hand in hand because it, especially it, 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 with Looney being fifth or sixth in minutes without even starting because Robert Williams was supposed to be eating them on the glass. And while he did have a lot of games with, you know, close to 10 rebounds and maybe more Steph and Wiggins bodying up, getting big defensive rebounds, key defensive yeah. rebounds down the stretch as well. I can clearly go back to that game four where Wiggins and Curry had every rebound. Curry yeah, had Curry had ten. Wiggins Andy, had a career high sixteen. So, oh, he had like sixteen, seventeen. Yeah. So <laughs> rebounding hand in hand with the defense, but we've made it this far and there's one thing that we gotta talk about more than anything else. And that's that man Wardell Stephen Curry, because at the end of the day, defense is only fifty percent of the basketball game. And on the other half, you got that ball. You got to put it in the hole. Right now, we need to talk about Stephen Curry putting Boston to bed. There's a time where you got to put the kids upstairs because it's grown-ups time. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? It's, it's grown-ups time. So <laughs> Stephen Curry with his best finals performance by far. Like, Jeez. really, it's, it's not even comparable yeah. to other finals he's played in six of them it is crazy to say because he's played in six of them but not only was it the points rebounds the splits all that he was the number one guy on offense without a close second mm -hmm. against the number one defense in the league 31.2 points per game on 48 percent from the field 44 percent from three 86 percent from the line once again, this is against the number one defense in the NBA and, and, and the defensive player of the year. I don't, yeah. That's what they yeah. said anyway. The, the main thing that needs to be highlighted is you're down 2-1. You're in the garden. Game four, 43 points, 10 rebounds. The greatest performance in Stephen Curry's career. I will not talk about any other performances. No, no. bigger situation, no better performance. 14 for 26 from the field, 7 for 14 from three, clutch shots down the stretch to even the series at 2-2, two to two, talking to the crowd, flexing on everybody. That's okay. when the series changed. So, Jay, just just give me what was going through your mind about that game and what, what Steph Curry did in game four. And, that, and I think in that game, 
I think they might have been on the bench showing them clips of how everyone said that they wouldn't even make the playoffs. Yeah. Dog. <laughs> <laughs> he was literally just playing the – he was, like you said, he was playing the best basketball career. And I remember you tweeted out, I was like, I don't know. Could Payne, Payne might be right about this. And I had to double back on it. And, like, and I'm looking at his performances, bro. And, and the garden at that with the crowd going nuts. Yeah. You know, they keep, they're going to be down 3-1. And he don't want to do that because he already he's been through this before. He's not trying to look that again. He can't and, and nobody else. I mean, coming back from three one, it's happened to him. But like, and he do it. He he wasn't trying to think about that. He was let me tie this series up. Yeah. We're gonna go back to San Fran, get this dub, come back here and take this motherfucking championship. You brought up game five with how good Wiggins played and how poorly Steph played. I think it's mind blowing that this dude went forty eight percent and forty four percent, including that game five where he shot zero for nine from three. And, you know, some people are going to use that, not logical people, just people, are going to use Game 5 saying that Wiggins deserved Finals MVP. And I'm all for giving Wiggins the praise. But what exactly did Curry do wrong in Game 5 other than miss threes? He was 7 for 13 from 2. He had 8 assists, and he had a highest plus minus of all the starters. I'm old enough to remember that there once was a time where people said Curry was the worst point guard defender in the league. There was a time where that could have been true. He was not a good defender. But the fact that there's still a narrative that he's not playing defense, that's yeah, just laughable. Yeah, that's just yeah. laughable. You got to yeah. watch these basketball games because the fact that this dude's gotten 15 pounds heavier, all muscle, and he is working his ass off on defense. Granted, he's always worked on defense, but he is still the smallest guy in terms of height and weight on the floor. He's put on sure. weight. He's put on muscle. And now he's playing great defense. Stephen Curry... Averaged two steals per game, the highest in the series, and opponents shot 39% when Steph Curry was guarding him. Not only was he playing ridiculous offense, he was shutting down on defense too. And that is why it is clearly one of the best finals performances we've seen in a while. Given what we've talked about, what we've seen, what does this finals MVP mean for Steph Curry? Oh, he... Bro, if, if Steph said, I don't want to play basketball anymore, top two and he's not two. <laughs> you can make the argument because like I just said, like I just said he, he, he's won four rings in the last eight years. They've counted him out every single time. They said KD is the reason why he's the re that he won. They say he, say he can't play defense. He says he's too small. He puts on weight. He plays great defense. And then he goes back after being out of the playoffs for two seasons because his team was hurt. Him winning that finals MVP just literally just said, Duff, thank you for everything you've done for basketball and which, what you've done for your career because it's amazing, bro. He should have two, right. but it's okay. It is what it is. He got his one. And this one, it, I think it means more than anything because, like I said, the past two years, they've counted the Warriors out. They've counted stuff out. They said the other Warriors gonna, is a dining. Is the dynasty over? <laughs> is the dynasty over? I, I believe if he wanted to say, yeah, I'm, I, I don't want to play basketball, basketball no more. It, I'm, I'm completely yeah. hearing that. I remember there was a quote that, that he had. I'm not sure when it was. It was sometime this season. But he said he's got more to accomplish, but nothing to prove. And you know what? He just accomplished what he needed to accomplish. Yeah, we know Steph Curry had nothing to prove. If you if you a basketball fan, if you watch basketball, if you understand basketball, you know there was nothing he had to prove. However, a finals MVP going to look good in that trophy case. Just based off of that trophy case, top 10 basketball player to ever play the game. Absolutely. As of this moment, if you have Kevin Durant higher than Steph Curry, you need to start watching baseball or something because this sport ain't for you. Like, Kevin Durant is not – on the same level as Stephen Curry after after a, making a dynasty Steph no. Curry won one ring without him got him won two he left and then won another one you could tell Stephen Curry's career story and there's plenty to say without Kevin Durant you tell Durant's story there's not much to talk about other than Steph Curry what my my headline right here says how much does finals MVP mean for Stephen Curry clearly it means a lot to him to come back after two years of just brutal team injuries. And granted, you still had some this year. But to come back and, you know, Curry's not the same player. He he can't lead a team. Wiggins is one of the worst number one picks. Klay Thompson's never going to be the same. He's washed. Draymond's Mr. Triple Single. And you won a goddamn championship. 
you could tell how much this meant to Steph Curry. And this finals MVP means that he has solidified himself as a top 10 basketball player to ever play the game. Like you said, if he retires tomorrow, your list will have to have Steph Curry on him. Peak, longevity, accolades, all of it, he's got it. On his slump year, might I add, his year that he had a slump, broke the record for most threes all time. All-star game MVP. Okay. Conference finals MVP. Okay. Champion finals yep. MVP. Okay. If that's your slump year, I don't want to know what a good year is going to look like. But, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, let me know where y'all got Steph Curry. And if it's not in that top 10, your comments getting deleted and you getting blocked. Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank y'all so much for tuning in to another episode of Talking to Town. Pay your word out, Jalen Diaz. We will see y'all next time. Appreciate it.